Good afternoon and welcome to the TBC Bank Group PLC third quarter 2022 results investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. It can be submitted any time via the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply click on Q&A, scroll to the bottom, type your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. Have the company review all questions submitted today and will publish responses where appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet company platform. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to the executive management team of TBC Bank Group PLC. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Dear all, thank you very much for joining our call. Uh, I'd like to start today's presentation with highlight of our key achievements during the third quarter. We continue with the market leader in Georgia with robust profitability and strong growth supported by solid capital. We also continue strong progress in exploiting our international growth potential. In the third quarter, the group generated the exceptional return of equity of 71.1%, while our set one ratio stood at 15.3%, is above the minimum required level by 3.5 percentage points. We remind the best capitalized system is back in Georgia. Our long book portfolio growth was 19 percent, while our deposit portfolio grew by 29 percent on constant currency basis. In the third quarter, we continue to expand our position in Uzbek market, and our long book reached up to 300 million lari and deposits around 300 million lari. I'm also delighted to report that the group's level, on the group's level, the number of digital daily active users reached 1.1 million in September, while the number of digital monthly active users amounted to 3.2 million for the same period. On the next slide, I am pleased to announce that we are adding two new medium-term targets. Uzbek operations to account for 10 to 15 percent of the group's net profit and to achieve 7 million monthly active users on the group's level. Now I'd like to review recent macro developments briefly on the slide number five. In the first nine months of this year, GDP growth in Georgia reached 10.2% despite adverse impacts of the war in Ukraine. We expect the growth to stay at around the same level during the remaining three months, resulting in an estimated GDP growth of about 10% for the full year. Also, on a positive side, the LARI continued to align with its strong-term trend against the dollar. The next slide shows the drivers behind the strong GDP growth. The current geopolitical crisis has once again proved the resilience of the Georgian economy. Exports have remained strong on the back of countries other than Russia and Ukraine. And the recovery in tourism flows, partially supported by the migration impact, contributed with strong export remissatis as well as recovering FDI inflows supports about 10% GDP growth for the whole 2022 year. Also, inflation remains elevated and stood at 11.5% in September, and it is expected to gradually moderate. Now, let's move to the next slide. Here, I'd like to reiterate the group's positioning and highlight our huge fast growth potential. First of all, we are the market leader in Georgia with diversified business across all market segments. Secondly, we have the consistently delivered robust profitability and steady growth backed by the strong capital. Third, we stand out with the advanced omnichannel distribution network with the best in class digital consumer proposition and the largest ecosystem network. In addition, we have the fast growing payment business in Georgia and Uzbekistan. And finally, our Uzbek operations give us a strategic advantage to deliver a long-term growth and profitability. In line with our group's strong market position and growth strategy, we continue to increase the number of our customers every year. And at the end of September, we had 3.9 million monthly active users in two geographies. Moving on to slide number nine, we show our leading position in Georgia. As you can see from this slide, we hold, we hold leading position across all segments with steady growth levels. These leading positions indicate resilience and diversity of our business model and allow us to extract significant cross-segment synergies and efficiency. On the next slide, I'd like to summarize our key financial results for the third quarter. On a year-on-year -year basis, our net profit increased by an exceptional 55% and stood at 321 million lari. 
This growth was related to the strong income generation across the board with substantial contribution from non-interest income. Our return of equity in the quarter reached 31.1%, while return of assets amounted to 4.8%. As expected, our cost of risk started to normalize and amounted to an annualized 1% in the third quarter. Over the same period, our cost to income ratio strongly improved to 5.5 percentage points and stood at a little bit less than 30%. And our capital position remains strong with set one ratio at 15.3% as mentioned above. On this slide 11, I'd like to share with you on an update on our digital ecosystem TNET. We have the largest digital ecosystem in Georgia that consists of four digital verticals, lifestyle, housing, automobile, and e-commerce. We have 1.8 million unique annual visitors across all verticals, which is around 40% of the internet and traffic among the Georgian websites. Our ecosystem allows us to leverage our large customer base on a data hub capabilities. First, to generate net fee and commission income. Second, create leads for loans. Third, strengthen our cost customer loyalty. And finally, increase our customer engagement. The following slide gives more details on the results of our digital ecosystems. Total gross merchandise volume is growing rapidly as our users are becoming more engaged. And at the same time, the number of leads generated increased four times year on year and the loan conversion rate grew by 9%. As a result, loan disbursed reached 26 million lari, accounting around 8% of our total retail loan disbursed during the quarter. Now let's move to the slide 17, which illustrates the solid growth of our Georgian payment business. In the third quarter, the number of POS transactions and transactions with TBC cards increased by 28% and 30% respectively year on year. And also it's important to highlight that our payment business is a significant contributor of our fee and commission income. On a slide 14, you can see our digitalization metrics both in Georgia and on the group's level. We have made strong progress in expanding our digital footprint on the group's level. As already mentioned, we have up to 3.2 million digital active users every month, while digital daily active users stood at 1.1 million in September. Importantly, our transaction of lending continues to be high at 99%, and our consumer lending and deposit sales of lending ratio also remain high at 70% in the third quarter. Now I'd like to update you more details about continued growth progress and rapid growth on our Uzbek banking operations. By the end of quarter, the number of downloads of our TBC US application increased to 2.8 million, while the number of registered users was 2.1 million. At the same time, as mentioned already, we reached up to 300 million lari in retail deposits and up to 270 million lari in our retail loan portfolio. Finally, on the slide 16, I'd like to highlight the strong performance of our payment subsidiary PayMe, which is the second largest payment provider in Uzbekistan. In the third quarter, PayMe continued its rapid growth in all major metrics. The number of monthly active users increased by 62% year on year and reached 2.1 million at the end of September. And total payments volume increased by around 64%. And over the same period, the both revenues and the net profit continued their impressive growth and reached 12 million lari and 7.5 million lari respectively. Now I'd like to hang over Georgi, Georgi, please. Thanks, Wachtang. Really great quarter. Great financials and results. And I'll start with slide 19 that shows kind of our, I would say, outstanding uh, financials and results. So uh, in Q3, our net profit, as Wachtang already mentioned, increased by an actually impressive 55% year on year. And that's driven by continuation of our strong revenue trend that we have been delivering for the, like, uh, since the banks, let's say, started. And as Wachtang mentioned, substantial contribution was from our non-interest income that I'm going to touch a bit later. So as a result, we are looking at an ROI of 31.1% for the quarter, probably one of the best that we have seen so far. 
So, and I'll now go to slide two, where I will deep dive a bit more into our profitability drivers. As I mentioned, both actually interest and non-interest income streams performed extremely well. And NIM, our NIM continued upward journey and increased both year on year, it's 100 basis points and quarter on quarter basis and landed at 6.3%. NIM increase is mainly driven by loan composition and loan yield actually effects. On non-interest side, the contribution is twofold. The first one is the strong ethics growth due to high volume of transactions, wider spreads, but also new treasury products. Net fee and commission income actually increased by higher payment transactions, as well as our new business let's say, products that we put in place. So all that actually resulted in a very robust and strong non interest growth. So I would like to move now to slide 21 to review our operating expenses. So in Q3, the increase was 34% year on year, and that was mainly driven by, we expand our business, both locally, let's say, into Uzbekistan, that also resulted in higher staff and admin cost. We actually put money into technology. We continue to invest into our business to ensure its ongoing strength and growth. In addition, staff costs also increased due to performance costs driven by higher less income. However, the key point is that consistent with the previous periods, our income grew at much faster rate and our cost to income ratio decreased in Q3 to 29.9%. It's not only below our target to 35%, but I think it's the first time it is below 30%. Now I would like to go to slide 22 that shows a very strong book quality. As of 30th of September 22, MPL remained stable quarter and quarter at very healthy 2.3%. Year on year trend actually is mainly driven by resumed payments from loans in retail and MSME segments. That was still like COVID tail last year. And since then, as we see customers start paying and our MPL is at 2.3%. Total provision coverage was very robust, 164%, sorry. And in Q3, cost of bricks actually continued to, I would say, within our normalized range that we anticipated and landed at 1%. So I would like now to, to go to slide 23, as that shows performance of our loan and funding portfolios. Year on year, the loan book growth was very high at 90%, that actually above our guidance, 10 to 15% on a constant currency basis. And that was mainly driven by our, our MSME and I would say retail segments. However, on quarter on quarter basis, our loan portfolio remained more or less stable, up by 2%. And the driver was actually the repayment from one CIB client. That is also the reason why CIB portfolio actually decreased a bit. As for the customer funding side, the growth was more prominent. We actually outpaced the market and that resulted in actually to increase our customer funding share. I would touch that point later on in one of the following slides. Now I would like to move to slide 24, when you can see our very solid capital position. Our capital ratios remained at very strong levels at quarter end, and all of them are well above the minimum regulatory requirements. And key point to mention here is that the ratios increased despite paying a generous dividend in September, and the majority of growth was delivered by our net profit. And that also was supported by strengthening line. Now I would like to move on slide 25, to 25, that shows our very strong liquidity and funding base. The share of customer funding in total liabilities, as I already mentioned, increased and reached 73%. It is up by two percentage points on year on year basis. I-5 funding that includes both senior and sub loans is around 1.9 billion. That is 8% of total liabilities. And our liquidity ratios, both LCR and NSFR, continue to be available the regulatory requirements. Here, I also would like to highlight that our LCR on Basel basis is 351%. And I would like to conclude with slide 26, with our promised and long awaited financials of our Uzbekistan business. To start with, I'm very pleased to announce that our Uzbekistan business, consisting of our fully digital consumer banking and payments subsidiaries, TBC Uzent Pay Me, turned profitable in Q322. In addition, I also would like to highlight that we expect Uzbe let's say the Uzbekistan Bank itself to be profitable for 23 and throughout the year. 
for this third quarter, TBC banks whose like TBC whose name was 60.2 percent and cost of risk was 7.4 percent. That provides us very uh, healthy risk actually it's a risk based name. And here I would like also to announce the mid term targets of our Uzbekistan business. First, it's 30 percent plus ROA. Second, five million MAU. And third, 10 to 50 percent share in groups net profit. So that concludes my part. Thank you. And I would like to hand back now to Wachtang. Wachtang, please. Yes, thank you, Georgi. And now I'd like to finish today's presentation by reiterating our new and existing medium term targets and comparing our performance in this quarter against those targets on the, it's, uh, on the slide number 27. Our monthly active users to that 3.9 million compared to our 7 million new target. Our Uzbek banking and payment business generated positive results, as Georgi mentioned, in this quarter, and we plan to grow to 10 to 50 percent of the total gross profit in the medium term. Our loan book grow, grew by 19 percent in year on constant currency basis against our target of 10 to 15 percent. Our return of equity was 31 percent, meaningfully above our medium term target of 20 percent plus. Also, our cost to income ratio was 29.9%, meaningfully lower than the, our medium term target of below 75%. And finally, our dividend payout ratio was 25% in 2021, and we paid the interim dividend of 2.5 lari per share in 2022, compared to our target of 25 to 20, 75%. With that, I'd like to invite to ask the questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated in the right hand corner of your screen. Just while the team take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Um, as you can see, we've had a number of questions come through throughout today's presentation. If I may, I'll just start off um, with reading the first one out. What risk do you face with such a large market share in Georgia? How do you manage this and any potentially bad debt risk? Maybe I will try to answer this question. So, by the way, this year we have a 30 years anniversary in Georgia as a TBC bank. And we have a brand, we have a very strong brand. So everybody knows TBC in Georgia and we built it our brand and the market shares in every segment year over year. So already for 30 years and for example, in the retail, as I have already mentioned, we have a very uh, we, we have a very strong brand. We have a very um, customer-oriented products. We are doing very well in the technologies, in the digital products. If you go to the corporate and SME businesses, we are trying to be long-term partners to our medium-sized businesses, to our corporate customers. So in every segment, we have a special strategies and we are implementing in the long term and as a result as the in, we've seen a question so we have a market shares in the different ways so from 35 to 40 percent and maybe i will cover on bed that risk of tank that was the second part of the question and one thing to add is what of tank said georgian market is a bit specific because two banks own 80 percent of the market and the third bank only has six percent share therefore from market actual risk perspective given the market structure we don't foresee any change in future and that may be georgia market specifics so on bad debt risk side we have a very strong underwriting standards we are quite uh, like a uh, strong risk appetite and we monitor our customers very carefully even during covid year we when we were very prudent and very conservative the cost of risk was around two percent like cost of risk however once COVID ended, that showed the resilience and strength of our portfolio. Customers actually paid the loans, and we had a quite a large, I would say, recoveries last year. And therefore, given our portfolio structure, our like credit characteristics, that's why we say that for the bank, cost of risk is around a let's say 100 basis points that we are we are now, and we don't expect any material change from that level. Fantastic. Thank you, Georgi. Next question we've got here is how sustainable are the growth rates? Obviously, you mentioned 55% here, which is, is, is fantastic, but how sustainable are they? Okay, thanks. That's a very good question. Probably this quarter and maybe next few will be something like a 
had, uh, like I would say, headwinds, like let's say supporting from FX income because Georgia market has some solid, solid volatility both on wholesale side and retail side. That also helped us and 55% might be difficult. However, despite that, we have a very strong growth projections. As I mentioned, our targets are 10 to 15% long growth, probably in the near future at higher and even higher. And we mentioned 20% plus ROA. Uh, that would say that it will be probably 20% few plus ROA, that what we are going to target. Uh, and uh, is that will be supported by our strong NIM and non-interest income, because on NIM side, we landed 6.3%. In like ne near to medium term future, we don't anticipate that to change much. We target to remain at least at 6% less handle for a foreseeable future. And non-interest income, we expect to continue at least 20 to 25% growth to continue. I already mentioned the cost of risk around kind of 1%. And plus our Uzbekistan business is also grow, going to fuel the growth. So as I mentioned next year, the bank itself will, will also become a profitable business. Uzbekistan is also profitable and that will support our growth and let's say profitability even further. much indeed um we touched on the digital bank obviously it's been a huge success question here saying it's been a huge success how do you replicate this in other other countries other jurisdictions um the same applies for pay me what's really driving that growth um you see um first of all the country because uh, uzbekistan is very interesting for us if you take only this population the growth of the population two percent every year so and the market is underpenetrated so the first driver is the underpenetrated market with the growth potential there and also same as in tbc is very well known brand in georgia pay me has a history in uzbek market as a payment provider the pay me is very well known on Uzbek market, we have a very strong brand here, and we are bringing new products. And we are trying to be very customer oriented here. And by these new products, we are trying uh, to grow. And uh, as we already made presentation here, it showed that year over year we have a very high growth first in the number of the customers and also in the number of the transactions. And one of point what I would like to add here is that we had our CMD last week. Hopefully, if you did not dial in, all the materials are on our website that shows actually our detailed strategy, how we are going to succeed in Toledo, Uzbekistan, including pay me. What plans do we have actually that include super up? So I won't go into a very, let's say, details here. But if you have a look at our website, that provides our detailed, let's say, detailed strategy breakdown. That's great, thank you. Um, I've got a question here from Tom, which is three questions. I think one of which we just covered off, um, asking is this growth sustainable? Um, the second part of that is, will you make increase in dividend payments? And the third part, on, and how are you actually growing those active users so quickly? Okay, uh, maybe I'll start. So, uh, like, if you think from our capital allocation perspective, we have three major pillars. One, to support our growth in Georgia. That will be probably more or less with the nominal GDP growth, but it will be about 10%, 10 to feel like that level. So we need to support that and we'll have sufficient capital to support. Second point, we need to support our Uzbekistan business growth. And here are two aspects. First, we need to support our Uzbekistan bank growth that we have a kind of, I would say, very high plans for them. And second point for Uzbekistan is that at the moment in pay me, we have minority shareholders who own 49%. We have an option next year that we are going to exercise and uh, for that and it will happen not in a distant future probably in q2 q next year and for that we have we need capital and we have capital and third we of course need to pay our shareholders back uh, and we also have more than sufficient capital for that and to guide you how we are thinking about this currently our dividend payout ratio is 25 to 35 percent last year we, we paid 25 percent However, if you compare our interim dividend in September, that was materially higher than last year's interim dividend. That probably is illegible the direction of the travel, uh, that our dividend paid out ratio most probably is actually intended to go about 25%. That was last year. Well, we need to see, but from interim dividend, that was kind of the direction. And like I would say, that with that range, probably in the middle of the range, that uh, would result in a very healthy, like even with the current share price up to nine to 10% dividend yields. 
So as we bring growth through, as we support our growth plans into Uzbekistan, uh, of course, we can and we will look at our DPR, how it will evolve. But nowadays, I would say that we will pay very healthy dividends to our shareholders. It's like, again, 9 to 10% yield. And we will grow not only in Georgia, but in other, let's say, countries and markets. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. That um, actually concludes all the questions that we've had through. So thank you for that. And of course, there only are further questions that do come through from investors today. The company will have the opportunity to review those questions and we'll um, publish responses where appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet Company platform. Uh, Vartang, before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you and the team, if I could just ask you for some closing comments, please. Yeah, so from my, our side, so thank you very much for participating and uh, as, as Georgi already mentioned, so we have a very robust uh, results in the third quarter and we will continue to deliver it. And as we already mentioned in our presentation today and on SCMD, we updated our medium term target. So now we have more ambition plans to increase the number of the monthly users. So we have to do much more in Georgia. We have to do much more in Uzbekistan. And I think as a management, we are ready to, to, to deliver much more. Fantastic. Vok, Tang, Georgi, thank you again for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close the session? You should be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the management team could better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I know it's greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of TBC Bank Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. Thank you and good afternoon to you all. Thank you.